welcome to Lady Highlanders Basketball on Somerville Educational Channel 15. I'm Todd Harmon alongside Braden Moriarty. And tonight at uh, Broon Field House, the Lady Highlanders welcome in the Crimson Tide of Everett. As of course Everett, the reigning GBL champions, but they come in tonight with a two and four record. Two wins, only four, I mean only two wins, four losses on the season. So they're looking to turn things around tonight. Of course the Lady Highlanders three and four this evening. They have one loss in the GBL. They lost to Malden earlier this season. So an incredibly important game. I know Coach O'Halloran's really fired up about it. I know toughness is something he's thinking about tonight. You gotta think about that, and when it comes to conference games, and you're familiar with the opponent, you know that you're gonna get a little saltier, salty game. You're gonna get some more elbows, some more hustle. It's important that Somerville plays their game. You know, they've actually been uh, they're on the upswing. They've improved since last season. Everett's taken a step back, at least so far. It's gonna be interesting to see how they match up here. We should know pretty early on. Absolutely, it should be a very, very interesting game tonight. We're gonna see that toughness come out. Uh, the Highlanders, of course, coming off the loss from uh, earlier this week as they fell to Whittier by the score of 52 to 37. Um, also, as I mentioned, they lost earlier this season to Malden. So they already have that one and oh, I should say 0 oh and one record in the GBL. So an incredibly important game for both teams tonight. And like you said, Braden, the familiarity really breeds kind of a, 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 a toughness and, and just a, a tough game that we're going to see tonight, a physical game as well from these two teams. And at the same time, you got to treat it like any other game. It's important for the Summer Rebel Highlanders to make sure that they are able to control the ball, ball security, work in transition. We saw that was being a problem yes. in Whitty versus Whittier. Let's see if they can correct some of those mistakes they made last night tonight or last game tonight. Absolutely, no doubt about that. Transition was an issue for them. Uh, transition defense was an issue, yes, for the, issue for them on the uh, last contest against Whittier. So we're going to be breaking away momentarily and get those starting lineups for you guys as uh, we have the Crimson Tide going up against your Highlanders tonight here at Brune Fieldhouse. So we're gonna pull away right now for the introduction of the starting lineups. You ready for some Lady Hoop? I'm ready for some Lady Hoop. I'm ready for Lady Hoop. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Somerville High School in the Eugene Broom Fieldhouse. Tonight, your Somerville Highlanders will face the uh, Greater Boston League opponent, the Crimson Tide of Everett High School. Somerville leads the way in assuring sporting events are safe and enthusiastic. Give honor and respect to student athletes, coaches, officials, families, and fans by appreciating the outstanding plays by all teams and athletes, supported decisions by coaches and officials, showing you our role model on the court and in the stands, only positive language and gestures. Removing your hat and remain standing for the entire national anthem and entering and exiting the area safely. Not doing your part to ensure some of the athletic events are safe and positive may result in being told to leave or being banned from local sporting events. Now the starting lineup for the Crimson Tide. Ooh, starting lineups. At forward number 30, Naomi Tuck. At forward number 14, Haley Powers. At guard number 32, Yasmin Guerrier. At forward number 11, Kiana Wilkerson. And at guard number 25, Jacqueline Emanuel. Everett is coached by Mr. Tammy, uh, Mrs. Tammy Turner. And now the starting line is for you, our Sullivan Islanders. At forward number two, Destiny Augustine. At forward, number three, Jamima Joseph. At guard, number five, Melina Pimentel. At forward, number 13, Miranda Melanson. And at guard, number 31, Emily Sabatino. The Highlanders are coached by Mr. Paul O'Halloran. Rise and move your hats and please join us in a moment of silence as we would like to honor Leo Sullivan, a supporter of Somerville Highlander Athletics, father and father of to freshman basketball player Megan Miller. Leo suddenly passed away this week and we will be missed by all. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as we honor America by the singing of our national anthem by Central Highlanders basketball player Jamila Joseph. Jamima. Once again, an absolutely tremendous rendition of the National Anthem by Jamima Joseph to open out this contest. Yeah, she crushed it. Let's hope she can crush the boards as well tonight. Uh, she is going to be integral to uh, Somerville's success here. We expect a big game from Jamima. I like the fact that uh, Mal uh, Miranda Melanson is getting the start tonight. That's a little something different. Yep. Uh, nice to have the Mauler out there on the court to start things off. No doubt about and it. She brings some nice energy and some nice toughness and like we were talking about, Familiarity breeds contempt. This is a in-conference game. We've got seeing Everett one more time. It's nice to have Miranda out there to uh, help set the tone. No doubt about that. I agree with you about having Miranda out there to set the tone, but also something else, a benefit of it, a side benefit of it, is you get the energy of a Jen Cremoni yep. coming off of the bench. And, uh, you know, interjecting energy like that is uh, something very important. Another point for tonight, two tremendous freshmen that we're going to see um, four years, hopefully, of development and uh, tremendous playing. Number three, of course, for the Highlanders uh, is uh, Jumima Joseph number 25 on the Everett side of things, Jacqueline Emanuel. So we'll see how those two freshmen do in tonight's GBL contest. Opening tip is going to be controlled by the Highlanders as Melanson taps it off to Pimentel. Pimentel controls it in the corner and kicks it out to the uh, right wing. Sabatino with the drive right off the bat. Her shot is no good, but she gets her own rebound. Emily kicks it to the outside. Augustine will kick it back to Sabatino. Her shot is up. It's no good. There's Joseph with the shot, but it is partially blocked as Keanu Wilkerson able to get a hand on that one. And here comes that young freshman for Everett as well. Dribble penetration from the right corner. Pass is given to the inside to Wilkerson, and she puts it up and in for the first points of tonight's contest. Yeah, someone's got to watch the baseline penetration there. That could be a problem. Uh, we saw that a little bit last game. If they can close that out, it might uh, force them to take some more jump shots. We see Everett in a zone here. Looks like a 3-2 zone as the pass, a skip pass from Melanson looking for Pimentel is picked off. And back the other direction is Everett. Controlling the ball is Guerriere. They get it around the horn. The corner jumper is up. It's no good. Melanson fighting for the rebound. It's controlled, though, by Wilkerson. And then they get it down low to Dotton, and she puts it up and in for two. Nice shot by her. Nice positioning, putting it up off the glass. Nice bucket for Everett. Somerville's really got to watch the long passes. That was a big problem against Whittier. Just go to the next closest man. Don't try to force it. Nice to look there by Augustine as she Sabatino. finds the cutting Sabatino to the bucket. And Emily opens up the scoring for the Highlanders. 
Really nice job of passing there by Augustine as she was able to find the cutting Sabatino back the other direction. The dri dribble penetration two. by Guerriere, and she gets it off to Doughton for two. Yeah, Somerville's got to close off the interior. A lot of close shots right now, and those are high percentage. We know that as they make another turnover with another long pass. Yeah, Pimentel trying to hit Melanson. Instead, it's back the other direction as Jacqueline, the young freshman, Emmanuel, tries the pass. The foul is going to go against the Highlanders. We're actually out of bounds. I don't know whether they're going to call a foul. Nope, there's no foul nope. on that. My, my bad. It's okay. We'll forgive you. I appreciate that. Forgiveness is very important in life. <laughs> As the shot is up, it's no good for Everett. Dotton has it now at the top of the key. She kicks it over to Emmanuel. Emmanuel's three-pointer is up. It's no good. Fighting for the rebound is Augustine down on the floor with Wilkerson, and it will be a tie ball situation on the alternating possession. What an the Crimson Tide will take it. Just an incredibly antiquated rule. I cannot believe that we are, what, seven games into the season, and we're still dealing with I this. I thought you'd spoken to the mayor about this. Yeah, it's an abomination. It's horrible. So Dotton gets it over to uh, Guerriere's three-pointer, no good. Melanson with the rebound there. Somerville with the 6-2 deficit as they try to uh, cut into this four-point lead as Augustine has it at the top of the key. She kicks it over to Joseph. Interesting. Over Sabatino, Sabatino to Melanson in the corner. Melanson's three-pointer is up, and it's good. Miranda Melanson. Yeah, already seeing dividends for the uh, starting of uh, Miranda out there tonight. She's actually paid off a couple of times on both sides with rebounding, and she was able to put that bucket home. Nice long shot. Pimentel trying to rip the ball away from Dotton there, but no good. She's not able to, as the foul is going to be called against the Highlanders on the cutting Guerriere. That's going to go against, let's see here, Jamima Joseph. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Dustin Augustine. All right, that's good. We don't want to get Jamima into early foul trouble as we take a look at the replay here on the foul. Oh, come on. That's a little touchy. Yeah, a little bit. That's what you want to go in. That's the first thing you want to go into the books. That thing, not setting a good stage there, refs. Come on, buddy. Guerrero's first shot is good. We'll be here all night to call it that every time. That's the truth. Second shot bounces around and bounces home. So it is a three-point lead for Everett. Five minutes left here in the first quarter. It's Pimentel dribble drive into the paint. No good with the left-handed runner. Emmanuel comes away with the rebound. There's that transition as they get the ball up to Dot. Nice job to get back by Augustine. As the rebound was controlled for a moment there by Guerriere, but then knocked out of bounds, and last to touch it was Everett, so the Highlanders will get it on the turnover. Nice hustle play from Destiny right there. Didn't give up on the play. She got beat, but made, uh, was able to get the uh, chase down block on that, and Somerville ends up with the ball. So let's hope they can turn something around in here. Jamima Joseph from the left wing, kicks it over to Augustine, back to Melanson at the left wing. There's Pimentel with the baseline drive. Her shot goes up, it's no good. Lots of contact there, no call. Emmanuel out ahead of the action. She will go up for the layup, and it is good for the young freshman. Yeah, I wish uh, Highlanders had been able to get a call on that end. Ooh, Pimentel nice. back the other direction. There's a left-handed with some spin off of the glass for two. Sky high off the glass right there. She wanted to go off the top of the backboard. Uh, barely missed that, but uh, got it to go. Nice shot. Dotton now has it at the top of the key. Man-to-man -man defense here for Somerville. It's Melanson defending Wilkerson. Her pass to the inside off of Dotton goes out of bounds, and the Highlanders will get it on the turnover, trailing by three, 10 to seven. Yeah, one thing I have noticed uh, from uh, him and tell so far is that she seems to be favoring her left hand so far this game much more than she has been. She's been trying to mix it up a little bit. She's gone to the left hand twice so far. Uh, one almost went in, the other one definitely went in. So let's see if she continues to do that. I think she sees something on the left side of the, uh, of the defense that she can actually penetrate. So let's see if she can keep working on that. Joseph now has it on the right wing. They'll get it to Melanson at the top of the key. Sabatino down to the right corner. Augusta with the drive. Ooh. She looks to pass it off. Uh, thought there might be a cutter there, but there was nothing there. It's out of bounds off of Somerville. And coming into the game is Jen Cremone as Melanson will take a seat. And here's that energy coming off the bench that we talked about as well. Yeah, absolutely. Jen Cremone is just a Wolverine out there on the defensive end. So let's see if she can scratch and claw and uh, get some turnovers and head the ball back the Highlander way. Somerville sticking with the man-to-man. -man. And the turnover there is miscommunication between Dotton and Emmanuel. Emmanuel looking to cut. Dotton passed it behind her, and the turnover goes back to Somerville. Huh? There we go. Tenacious defense, that's what you need, and Jen Cremone brings it as she brings the ball up the court here. 
Oh no. <laughs> and the attempted steal there by Guerriere. We have a jump ball situation on the alternating possession. It will go to the Highlanders. Just a tremendous rule all the way around. There's really no flaw to be found in it. Absolutely. I think we should call the mayor and congratulate the mayor for not changing the rule in the least. I think we should provide the arrow, or at least the machine that gives us the arrow with the key to the city. That is a really good idea. I'm sure that machine could really use the key. I'm sure. They would appreciate it. Absolutely. Scramoni gives it off to Sabatino. You notice the uh, Highlander offensively, they've moved Jamima more to the uh, foul line area there to combat the uh, defenses that we're seeing from Everett as a foul is called on the Crimson Tide. That foul is going to go against number 25. That's Jacqueline Emanuel, the young freshman. Jacqueline Emanuel. As we take a look at the replay here off of the... Uh, trying to figure out exactly which play this was. Oh, it was the nice move by Pimentel to get the bucket. Sabatino passes it towards the inside. It's tipped out to Augustin. Augustin collects the ball, fires it up. It's no good with a little underhanded shot. Rebound controlled by Dotton. Back the other direction, Everett as Emmanuel tried to hit Guerriere but threw it behind her out of bounds. So the Highlanders will get the ball back. Lots of turnovers that we're seeing from the uh, Crimson yep. Tide, but the Highlanders are not able to cash those in yet. They still trail by three. Those will come. You just got to keep uh, forcing them. If they don't get a shot off in the offensive end, it's tough for them to score. No doubt about that. <laughs> Excellent point, as a matter of fact. Hey, I'm here for the insight. Sabatino will kick it off to Joseph. Shamima gives it to Cremoni. Cremoni now with the dribble penetration on the isolation. And she will try to bounce pass it over to Jamima Joseph, but the ball is kicked. They should reset the, the uh, shot clock here. Let's see if they're going to reset the shot clock. It was obviously a kick. No reset of the shot clock, though. Hmm. So as the ball was kicked out of bounds by Everett, we do have a substitution. As Haley Powers comes out of the game. Need a little tightening up from the refs here. That definitely should have been a reset shot clock, but it doesn't matter to Destiny. Ah, oh, Destiny Augustin with the drive and the finish. Nice move from Destiny, showing it off, picking the right shots to take. That's what we like to see from her. Sabatino trying to get out in the passing lane. Instead, the uh, shot put up by number two, <laughs> Chloe Cardillo. Back the other direction. As Sabatino very quickly goes in. No good. Cremoni's rebound is up. And it's good. And the Highlanders lead for the first time tonight, 11 to 10. I want to talk about the block that Molina Pimentel put on that to free up the ball handler coming down this end to end up with the easy bucket. That was awesome. That was a uh, Michael Floyd level block uh, set by her. Knocked her man down. It was awesome. Great job there by Cremoni as her box out was able to tip the ball back to Joseph. Joseph going coast to coast here and she'll get the foul as she gets Wilkerson to foul her as she went up on the drive. So she will go to the line shooting two. Nice to see Jamima looking for her own Deanna shot Wilkerson. there. Forcing the issue. Of, there's really nobody else on the floor right now as tall as Jamima as we take a look at her running the floor and getting it up there. Like we talked about, if she can get the ball in the paint, put a shot up. She's either going to go to the line or get a high percentage shot and maybe even her own rebound. Joseph's first shot is up, and good. That was the second team foul on Everett. As Destiny Augustin takes a seat on the bench, Miranda Melanson back into the game. Jamima's second shot is up, rolls around, no good. Rebound fought for as Pimentel had it. But we're oh. going to have a jump ball situation. Looked like she ripped it away before. There yeah. could have been a tie-up. A little quick whistle there, but on the alternating possession, Everett will have it. I'm starting to, uh, you know, uh, what's, the, what's the opposite of home cooking? Yeah. Takeout? I believe we got a little takeout situation here. Yeah. Come on, refs, tighten up. It's very air. Now he's going to call a kickball. Of course, now he is. Okay, they're officially labeled suspect. So, you suspect. Kickball situation here is Jen Cremoni gets the kickball when uh, Everett kicked the ball earlier. No reset of the shot clock, but yeah. that's okay. Hey. Everett will inbound from underneath the basket. Gets it over to Emmanuel. Feeds it back to Guerriere. Finding Dotton at the top of the key. Defended there by Joseph. Back to Emmanuel. 
Cremoni with a nice defense there. They kick it back out to the top of the key. There's some nice defense as well. Sabatino reaching in, trying to get the ball away. Isn't able to. Emmanuel triple teamed in the corner. Oh, ah, yeah. And a travel right there as number 33, Carol Ann Cardin Cardinal took the extra step. Yeah, great defense from Somerville across the board there. Really forced the issue for Everett. Got them out of their passing lanes, out of their comfort zone, and forced the turnover. Nicely done, ladies. 36 seconds left in the quarter. Oh, as Cremoni takes the extra step there. Somerville leads 12 to 10, but the turnover goes back to Everett. 34.9 seconds remaining in the quarter. Man-to-man -man defense once again for Somerville. Jamima has Dottie outside for left wing. Air defended by Sabatino there over to the right wing. Emmanuel has it defended by Pimentel. Pass goes to Air. And there's a moving screen is going to be the call. Timeout ever. Nope, no, timeout forever. I thought I... Yeah, it kind of looked that way. Yeah. Hmm. So a timeout for Everett is, no, I'm sorry, Somerville may be the one who called the timeout. I'm not totally sure. He's being very emphatic in terms of pointing, but I'm not totally sure. A lot of gestures, a lot of gesticulating yeah. going on right now. Yeah, Maybe we should be focused on getting the correct call done instead of the animated call. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe he just came out of a Pilates class. I don't know. Is that what they do in Pilates? I wouldn't know. Do you know? I, I'm not totally sure. I've never been to a Pilates class myself, so... I have a feeling like mud is involved. My, my workout, my workout regimen does not include Pilates. What does your workout regimen? Well, there's uh, curls of the 16 ounce variety. I figured as much. That's, That's what I was expecting. Of Coca-Cola. Oh, sure. Yes, it's a family show. Yeah, absolutely, it mm -hmm. is. 15 <laughs> seconds left here in the first quarter of play. Somerville leading 12 to 10. Yeah, if you're Somerville right now, you got to be a little upset with the missed opportunities. You got to get a little higher percentage uh, as far as uh, shot accuracy goes right now. A lot of balls rimmed out. But if they keep up the defensive pressure as they have, they've really thrown Everett off their game. They haven't really got any high quality possessions over on this end of the stroke uh, on, on offense. Uh, just keep focus on playing your defense, and the offense will come. The man to man defense of Somerville. Really aggressive man to man here in the half court as Cardinal has it. Nice. Ball's almost stolen away, and that is a shot clock violation. So with 3.5 seconds remaining on the first quarter game clock, the shot clock violation, so 3.5 seconds for the Lady Highlanders to extend this two-point lead. Let's see what as they got. Cremoni it. has it. She'll bring it past One. the half-court line, feed no. it over to Joseph, but nothing doing there as they couldn't get the shot off. So after the first period of play, the uh, Highlanders lead in this contest by the score of 12 to 10. A really good first quarter there for the Highlanders as we see a couple of the highlights of Sabatino with a great cut there to the basket. Miranda Melanson with that three-pointer. Uh, great to see her get onto the board early. And there's Destiny Augustine as she gave the lead to the Highlanders right there with that shot. Yeah, you know, it, there's been some great ball movement from Somerville when they don't do the long passes, the, you know, really optimistic passes, as I call them. Uh, we're trying to go from one side of the court to the other. There's way too many people involved uh, that you have to throw through the trees and you're going to hit a branch. So uh, they've been, when they focus on their passes and focus on the high percentage pass, it's been working out for them. Uh, a lot of interior scoring, which has been good so far. A lot of stuff in transition, actually, for Somerville as well. We've seen uh, Molina Pimentel uh, get a couple of layups and a couple of movement, but everybody's kind of contributed. We've seen Sam Sabatino on defense over this end, Melanson on defense. Everyone involved has been pretty good. Yeah, no doubt about it. Sabatino also, she's been a great defensive stopper for the Lady Highlanders so far this season, but tonight we're seeing her on the offensive end, yeah. taking a little bit of control, uh, base line drives um, and also cutting towards the basket that we've not really seen her aggressively as aggressively um, attacking on the offensive end we're seeing that tonight yeah what I really like seeing is Jamima playing the Kevin Durant role and she's kind of uh, moved away from outside of the paint and she's kind of swinging from the wings which is really like a, an interesting take on it I like to see them utilize that more and see if they can get her driving in now we've got Miss Pimentel in front of us to inbound the ball oh wait 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 oh. We aren't quite ready. Not quite ready as Melina Pimentel will inbounds directly in front of us. Melina, let us get our seats, please. We can't see. Down in front. <laughs> hey, come on. Down kid. in front. Stand right in front of us. As pass comes into Cremoni. Cremoni controlling the ball now, defended by Cardinale. Bounce pass looking for the entry to Jamima Joseph. Knocked back out. 
There's Augustin with the pass towards Joseph. Joseph's shot is up, it's no good. Rebound brought away by the Crimson Tide. Square here will control. Good look from Jamima, that ball's gonna go in nine times out of 10. That was just the 10th time. Cardinal drove it into the paint. She got lost in the air though, left her feet, had nowhere to go and just kind of threw the ball down towards the basket. Nobody home, so on the turnover, the Lady Highlanders control. Yeah, it's always good to have a plan when you leave your feet. That's why I try not to leave my feet ever. I might have to deal with the fact that I have a two inch vertical, but. You're up to two inches from the vertical now? I've been working on it. Wow, that's and, impressive. Yeah, Pilates. <laughs> nice callback. Thank you. Tim Mattel gives it off to Augustine. Everett back into a zone defense here as Augustine looking to penetrate towards the inside will give it off to Joseph. Joseph back out to Pimentel. She has an open lane to drive. She rolls it in to the bucket. Two. Two. Gravity can be your friend. And it definitely was for Molina right there. Great, great, great bucket. 14 to 10 is the Somerville lead as Emmanuel with the baseline drive. Her one-handed runner spins around, no good. And fighting for the rebound was Emmanuel. She went back up with it and no good again. Uh. Pimentel comes away with the rebound and we're going to have a foul against Emmanuel. That's going to be her second personal foul and the third team foul good against foul the Crimson Tide. So some early foul Emmanuel. trouble for the young freshman for uh, the Crimson Tide as she will take a seat on the bench. And I can't spell very well, but that spells good things for the Highlanders right there. You want to get their good players in foul trouble. If she takes a seat on, oh, okay. Cremoni's pass to Pimentel. Pimentel was not ready for it at all. She got hit in the side of the head with the ball. Let's see if she can shake that one off. That did not look pretty. So after it bounced off of uh, the, the Pimentel head, Went out of bounds. Here's the uh, replay on that. Quickly, Everett able to get a layup basket there. Oh. Yeah, that, that did not look fun. That stings. So it's now a 14 to 12 Somerville lead as Jamima has it on the right wing, feeds to the inside, looking for Sabatino. She's going to be fouled down there. As we'll see who that goes against, probably Gruyere, I believe. Pimentel is going to go over and check in with Coach O'Halloran. I think they're going to sub her out just so that she can uh, get her bearings again. Uh, not as this comes as a surprise to you, but uh, back in my playing days, that happened to me quite a lot. And uh, that as explains you can see, a lot. Right, it really does. I wasn't actually always this ugly. I was referring more to the effect upon the brain of repeated hits. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, about right. Wait, are we watching basketball? There we go. Oh, hey. Sabatino makes her first. This is fun. <laughs> Second free, low, free throw for Emily is good. So a four point lead once again for the Lady Highlanders, 16 to 12. Six minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the half. Sabatino defending Guerriere. There's Cardinal, she's defended ah, by Cremoni. We have another travel, it appears. What are they gonna call? It is a travel. It's Cardinal with the travel. Jaleesa Harding checking into the game for the Crimson Tide. And Everett going to a full court. TC in the game, Taylor Casey hey. inbounding here. Gets it off to Cremoni. Cremoni defended there in the corner as a full court pressure Re yields a turnover as Grier goes up for the shot. Cremoni's going to get called for the foul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jen got trapped back there and she tried to go uh, with a bounce pass. Kind of telegraphed it. It was kind of an Over easy pickoff for the Everett Casey. Crimson Tide. And they're going to get a free throw out of the uh, action, possibly even two. Actually, that foul goes against Taylor Casey, so TC gets rung up for the foul. I thought it was Cremoni in that situation. Scrier's first shot is up. It is good. Man, I hope Taylor scores something because I got something I just came up with. It's gold. It's gold, Jerry. Gold, Jerry. <laughs> if it's Ovaltine, why is it in a round jar? <laughs> it's gold, Jerry. Gold, I'm telling you. It's defended. On the inbound, TC was defended by Dottie. Dottie picks up the foul there. That's going to be, let's see here. Uh, trying to find her on my scorecard. I thought that was her second. Nope, Dottie, that is her first foul. Staying with the full court pressure. Let's see if she can get it in. Taylor Casey. Oh, come on. The five second there. How quick is the five seconds is that? One, two, three, four, five. That's a pretty quick five seconds. 
Yep. Melina Pimentel checking back into the game. TC going to take a seat on the bench. Yeah, you Good can to see, see Melina back. Yeah, you can see she didn't want to go off, but uh, coach made her come off just so they could check her, which is important. Safety regulations with the concussion protocol and everything like that. They just got to make sure that she's checked out okay. Gray Air kicks it off to Haley Powers. Power shot is no good. Cremoni comes away with the oh, rebound. No. Tried to get the uh, transition going, but Jamima not ready for that pass. Back to Powers as she cut into the paint. Shot is up, no good. And we have a jump ball situation on the rebound on the alternating possession. Everett will maintain possession. Not only is it a stupid rule uh, that should be used very, very, very infrequently. Never. Okay, but uh, this referee has gotten kind of happy with the double thumbs up jump call. It happens very, very quickly. Very, Let me find it out. Very fast on the uh, the whistle there as Guerriere's shot is no good. Melina Pimentel comes away with it as she is defended by, whoa, she's defended by Jaleesa Harding. Nothing called. It's Cremoni now has it at the top of the key. She will drive past Haley Powers, kick it over to Sabatino. Sabatino's jumper is up. It's no good. And it goes out of bounds off of Chloe Cardillo. Timeout, Somerville. Timeout on the floor by Somerville. Somerville leads 16 to 14, five minutes and 14 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. You know, it's interesting. I'm not going to get started, uh, you know, overloading on the refs like I normally do. I mean, that's Tommy Heinsohn's job. I was going to say. Yeah, but Tommy uh, points. I've seen a lot more whistles down on the Everett side of the ball than I have down here in the Somerville side of the ball. And I, I don't want. I don't want to get in the way of your rant in the least. I know what the scoreboard but I'm says. I'm just pointing out that there have been five team fouls against Everett and two team fouls against the Highlanders. I understand your point, okay. but it goes against everything I'm trying to say right now. <laughs> I hate when the math doesn't follow your, your point. Yeah, don't you know that we live in a post-truth society now? <laughs> yes. Okay, facts, facts don't mean anything. Oh, I know. Jump on Twitter and say the same exact thing. Man, we are really nailing the references tonight, aren't we? Yes, topical. We are. Very topical. Hey. <laughs> with a 20-year-old Seinfeld reference earlier. I will say, I will say, I think the, the, the whistles have been a bit quick in reference to the jump balls. No question about that. And I think there's a place for that. There's an argument to be made for that. Like we've been talking about, this, these teams are familiar with each other. You don't want to let them get into a scrum and then tempers flare and all of a sudden we get somebody elbowing somebody else in the chin. So, yeah, I can understand, you know, proceeding with caution there, but some of these have been ridiculous. Pimentel inbounds to Augusta and out to Emily Sabatino. Back to Cremoni at the top of the key. She dribble penetrates into the paint, kicks it out to Augusta, and Augustin's shot is short. As Dotton comes away with the rebound, hey, oh. it's immediately stolen. And how, how quick was that whistle? Come on! How quick was that whistle? Good uh, Lord! And I just did the Tommy thing where I just grabbed my head. I, I am sorry. These whistles have been incredibly quick as we're resetting the shot clock now. Jump ball situation. Alternating possession goes to Somerville as Augustine will get the inbounds. So Augustine dribbling with it there. Pimentel has it at the top of the key. Screen set there by Cremone. Pimentel tries to split the defenders. No good there. There's a jump ball situation. Oh. And on the alternating possession here, let's see how quick this whistle was. Let's see. And she's got possession and there, the ball that's is a ripped steal. away. That's a steal. That's but, just a steal. I mean, that was in slow motion and the whistle was still quick. And they called that a jump ball. Yeah. Okay. All right. So on the alternating possession on that jump ball, on this jump ball situation, Everett will have it. As Gary Air drives into the paint, she uh, goes up. Her shot is no good, but she is fouled. What? She took like four steps. Foul's going to go against Cremoni as 20 gets called for that one. That will be her first. She LeBron through the lane. Really? Okay. I guess uh, I gotta get my eyes checked. So Gary Air, four for four from the line so far this evening. Make that five for five. She's looking to tie this ball game up. 16 to 15 currently her score. One, one, two, two three. three. There was, might have been a fourth there, there was, too. Yeah, come on. Gary Air, second shot, we're gonna call lane violation on number 14. So we have a lane violation against uh, Maddie Durace as she is a young freshman playing out there for the uh, Crimson Tide as well. So one point lead remains for the Lady Highlanders. TC's inbounds, comes to Jamima. Nice. Jamima's out ahead, she feeds Augustin. Oh. Augustin can't quite control, and they're gonna pull the offense, or pull the ball back out and reset the offense with 425 remaining in the half. Smart move by the Highlanders. Let's give it to Sabatino. Sabatino drives in, no good, as the young freshman Maddie Durace comes away with it. 
She tries to go in. She is fouled by TC as Taylor's going to get rung up with her second team, her second personal foul. So we'll go foul number 12, Taylor Casey. It's going to be the fourth team foul called against the Lady Highlanders. So the freshman at the line shooting two. First shot is up. It's good. It's the second foul on Ta Taylor. There's Derace's second shot. It's good. Seven for seven from the line is Everett, and they lead by one, 17 to six. Double dribble gonna be called on Jen Cremoni. Big turnover there as the Highlanders just lost the lead, lost the ball as well, and Everett looking to add to that one point lead. Yeah, Jen's gotta watch the ball a little bit harder. That's her third uh, turnover that I've counted so far this quarter, uh, possibly fourth. I'm not really good with the whole math scenario, but we'll, 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 we'll figure that out. Point being, she's gotta watch it. Feeds it over to Guerriere. Guerriere's shot is up. It's no good. Dotton now in a jump ball situation on the alternating possession. The Highlanders will have it. So with 4.01 remaining here in the first half of play, Highlanders trailing by a point, 17 to 16. A shining beacon of truth, that arrow. Jamima gets it over to TC. TC with the ball now, controlling it easily across the timeline, looking for Jamima down in the low block. Her shot is up, it's no good. Nice pass there, yeah. but just couldn't quite finish. Guerriere, I should say, coming back the other direction, call for the travel. There's that extra step you were looking for. Yeah, we just found it in another possession. That's good because what uh, I saw from the summer, uh, clogging the paint down there from the Highlanders, making them uh, adjust their dribble is definitely going to cause some more of those traveling scenarios. That is not five seconds. We have a hold oh. going, going to be called, actually. It's, it's going to go against number two for the Crimson Tide as Chloe Cardillo Never is calling for that. Two, Chloe Cardillo. A hold. That's, that's her first personal. The sixth team foul against the Crimson Tide. TC looking in, bounds, trying to get it to Destiny. Destiny clapping for it, she gets it, tries to look ahead. There's Jamima Joseph, nice. feeds it off to TC. TC trying to finish with a beautiful underhanded finish. TC right. with the points. Get ready, get ready. TC, TCB in. See what it did? You see what it did there? TCB real, brother. TCB real. TCB, TC, TCB. And the rebound fought for and pulled away by Jamima. Destiny looking down oh, floor to goodness. Emily Sabatino. She controls it. She goes up for the shot. It is no good, but she is fouled. As that foul is going to go against number two, uh, Chloe Cardillo again. So that's Cardillo's second personal foul. And now in the bonus two, are the Cardillo. Lady Highlanders. Yeah, she got bumped as she was going up for uh, the layup there. If you got the ball down that end and you're moving with a full head of steam, just go to the bucket, put it up. Let them let foul you. Wilkerson and Merlanson ready to check in. Highlanders leading 18 to 17. First shot by Sabatino is no good. She's two for three from the line so far this evening then. Melanson checks in for Josephs. Wilkerson checked into the game as well for the Crimson Tide. Sabatino's second shot. No good. So Wilkerson comes away with the rebound. They feed it up to Durace. Durace with the running shot, no good. As Destiny Augustine fighting for the rebound, they're gonna call a jump ball situation. <laughs> Come on! And... This is, the, this is the most jump balls that we've seen. This might be more than we've seen leading up to this point in the season already. Yes, I completely agree. I've lost count, frankly, of how many jump balls we have. On the alternating possession, Everett will have it. Stupid so rule. They get it out to Barrier. From the right wing, she thought about the three. Instead, she will dribble. Defended by Sabatino, just past the three minute mark remaining in the first half. Highlanders leading by one, 18 to 17. You can hear the Highlander crowd getting into it here as Wilkerson dribble penetrates into the paint. Her layup shot is no good. Rebound fought for as Wilkerson tries to fly it, throw it off of a Highlander. Instead, it bounces away to Everett. The left hand jumper is no good as Cremoni will come away with it off the pass from Augustine. Uh, Tries to feed it forward, there's TC with the ball. It's Destiny Augustine with it there, she will dribble penetrate towards the baseline, feed it back out to Cremoni. Cremoni will kick it back out to Augustine, a little two-man game there. 
as the bounce pass attempted towards Sabatino is stolen away and back the other direction is Everett. Ooh. There's Guerriere, she is fouled going in. We're gonna see who this gets rung up against. It's gonna go against Cremoni as that's gonna be her second personal foul. Number foul number 20, Jennifer Cremoni. As we took a look at the replay, that is that's Jen's second foul and if you're gonna get a foul, make it count. And she did. Nice hard foul, clean. This Guerriere continues to be hot from the line. Six for six from the line now. Ties this ball game up 18 to 18. 208 remaining in the first half. Guerriere's second shot is up and it is good. Very good from the free throw line. She is seven for seven in tonight's contest. As Destiny controls it up the floor. Looking to go up for the shot. She'll kick the shot back out to TC. TC takes a jumper, no good. Go. Melanson comes away with a long rebound. She'll feed it back out to the right wing where Coloni is. Miranda knowing where to Coloni be. Coloni double teamed there for a moment as Dotton steals the ball away from Melanson, but then TC trying to get the ball away, but it's stolen back from by Durace. Durace's shot is no good. TC comes away with the rebound. Head up looking for somebody to pass to. She gets it to Cremoni, they'll reset the offense. As Cremoni feeds it to Augustin. Augustin, the three-pointer, no good. Long rebound comes out to Guerriere. Minute 20 remaining in the first half. Somerville trailing 19 to 18. Guerriere drives into the paint. She tries to pass the ball off. It's stolen by TC. TC, one on three, thinking about going up. She does. Ball is blocked. Back the other direction, Guerriere looking to cherry pick, but the pass from Wilkerson too far, and it goes out of bounds. The Highlanders will have it with a minute one remaining in the half. We got a high flying, high paced game right now, and everybody's balling out. Not sure this was a block. Yes, it was. Yep. She got ball on that one. Yeah, she got her hand after the fact, but uh, she got ball on the way up, so that counts. Jamima Joseph checking back into the game as she inbounds to Melanson. Ooh. Very nice job breaking the pressure there. They get it back to Jamima. Jamima goes up for the layup. No good, but the foul is called. That's going to go, I believe, against Dotton. Let's see who that's going to go against. If that's against Dotton, that's very important. That is against Dotton. Nice. That's Every going to be, I think, her second. Yes, that is her second of the contest. So two fouls against Dotton, one of their better low post players. The bonus of this is the fact that not only do you get two shots to uh, get two more points with the time stopped here, but Jamima gets hot. She gets another couple shots and looks at the rim. Free looks at the rim to get hot. Jamima's first free throw is good. She's two for, one for two from the line tonight. Or I'm sorry, two for three from the line tonight. Yeah, you can build that rhythm. All shots count, even free throws, and they definitely can help. Looking for the lead here with this one. It's Jamima's second shot, no good off the back rim. Tie ball game, 19-19, 50 seconds remaining in the half. Square Air calls out the signals. Pass goes over to number four. The left wing jumper is no good, but there's Grary Air. I'm sorry, Dotton with the rebound. Islanders get caught looking at the ball as we play a long, long pass here, and Milan oh. Miranda actually hurt herself going up there, but she seems like she's all right. Gives a thumbs up to the bench. She got a hyperextended elbow. She kind of got tied up with the uh, Everett defender. So ever now the two-point lead, 21-19. There's 30 seconds left here in the half. Very important defensive possession here for the Highlanders. About a three-second differential from the game clock to the shot clock. Yeah, you get a stop here, you get a chance to tie it up going into the halftime. Harding feeds it over to Wilkerson. Wilkerson over to Durace. Durace feeds it to Dotton, defended by jo Joseph. Back over to Harding. Harden feeds it to Guerriere. Three seconds on the shot clock. Guerriere's shot is up. It's no good. Jamima Joseph will come away with the rebound. Go, go, go! And okay. we're going to have a timeout on the floor for the referee. The buzzer you heard was the shot clock buzzer, not the half buzzer. So there's a minute, one and a half seconds, I should say, remaining on the clock. Now we're going to see if they're going to add any time to the clock. They personally, I think they should. There should be about three seconds left on this whenever the uh, referee called the timeout. They aren't going to add any time though. So one and a half seconds remaining. Somerville down by two. They'll be inbounding and have the full length of the court that they have to go to score points here at the end of the half. TC looking to inbounds. Feeds no. it to Joseph. Harden defending her there. And nothing doing there as uh, the inbounds defended well by Everett. So at the end of the first half, 
the uh, Highlanders trail in this one by the score of 21 to 19 as the Crimson Tide of Everett have the lead here at Broon Fieldhouse. You are watching Lady Somerville Highlanders action on Somerville Educational Channel 15. We are back to begin second half action as the Lady Highlanders trail in this one 21 to 19. They will be inbounding directly in front of us as Sabatino gets it off to Cremoni. We'll have the first half leading scores as uh, this quarter continues on. Um, on the floor for the Lady Highlanders, you have Miranda Melanson with the ball right now. Destiny Augustin just tried to pass the ball into Emily Sabatino. Jamima Joseph with the dribble penetration. Uh, nothing doing there as Augustine gets it back. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Jim Cremoni out there as well, and Emily Sabatino. And there's Jamima Joseph with her first field goal of the contest. She has two points on two of four shooting from the line uh, until then. So four points on the contest for Jamima tonight. Good, tough, contested shot going straight up with it. Probably should have gotten the foul call to go along with it because she was bumped, but she'll take the two. Dotton will kick it out to the right wing. Penetration pass there to Guerriere, and she goes up and in 4-2. She's the leading scorer in the contest. She has 11 points now, nine points in the first half. Seven for seven from the free throw line is Guerriere. Somerville using their offense here, trailing by two. Miranda Melanson with a long range three. No good from the top of the key as Emmanuel tried to save it going out of bounds, and it, she was not able to, so Somerville will maintain possession. Emmanuel in the first quarter, or first half of play, I should say, only two points for the young freshman for Everett. She has foul trouble, two fouls on her. Uh, Doughton with two fouls as well for Everett. As Sabatino goes in, and that's going to be the third personal foul against the young freshman, Jacqueline Emmanuel. As she picks that one up, Sabatino with the drive will go to the line, Every shooting two. Heads up Jacqueline play by Emily Emmanuel. to get the ball, drive it into the paint, and pick up the foul. Uh, to go to the line, it's, uh, it's just bonus points for being able to get her into further foul trouble. Yeah, nice screen there by, by Cremoni and on the help defense. Emmanuel out of position there. Sabatino misses the first free throw though. Sabatino now two for five from the free throw line on the night. Four points so far for Emily. Emily's had a tremendous game so far. She's been all over the place, making some crisp passes, playing some excellent defense. Now she just needs to work on getting some free throws to fall. A second free throw no good as well as Emmanuel with the ball. Defended by Sabatino. Coach Turner deciding to leave her electrifying freshman out there. As Guerriere tried to pass the ball back to Doughton, it goes out of bounds. Doughton did not know it was coming, so on the turnover, the Highlanders will get the ball. They trail by two, 23 to 21. Jen Cremoni with the ball. She has two points in tonight's contest. Something she's got to focus on in the second half is uh, ball security here. You said it, and a steal almost happened as Sabatino will take the ball back. Feeds it out to Melanson. The corner jumper no good for Melanson as we're going to have a foul. We're going to get uh, Jamima on the push off underneath. That's going to be her first personal Somerville foul, the first team three, foul against Peter Somerville Jason. here in the second half. It's funny, they caught that one, but they didn't catch the one where they got the arm on Melanson on the shot. That's okay, though. It's just the start of the second half. They'll warm up eventually. At some point. As Emmanuel almost moved the pivot foot. Did not, though. There's Sabatino cutting in, trying to steal the ball away from Dotton. She was able to control it, though. Emmanuel's three-pointer is up. No good. Rebound fought for. There's Cremoni with it. Almost pulled it away. Jamima came away with it to finish. There is... Destiny trying to lead Jamima into the paint with a bounce pass, but no good as Cremoni gets it. Cremoni's shot is up, it's no good, but the foul will go against Everett as called for the foul is Haley Powers, number 15. Excellent job by Jen to get the shot up there. Uh, she was, doing, she was off, off balance, off center, still was able to get the ball up towards the hoop. So two shots here for Cremoni. Her first free throw is good. So she can tie it up with the second free throw here. Second shot by Cremoni up. No good off the back iron. Joseph almost got the rebound there. Goes out of bounds off of Everett. And the Highlanders will have the ball trailing by one, looking to take the lead with this possession. It's be interesting to see how we work this inbound pass here. Cremoni finds, ooh, looks for Sabatino, bounces off of her hands, 
And Powers comes away with it, gets it off to Guerriere. She has it now. As her pass across to Doughton is tipped out of bounds by the Highlanders. So Everett will maintain possession. 5.25 left here in the third quarter of play. Highlanders trailing by one, 23 to 22. One thing I'd like to see Cremoni uh, improve upon as this uh, second half rolls on is, is to look for your second option. If she, she has a tendency to telegraph her passes and get stuck on the first option and force the issue. Defense can react to that pretty easily. Grary Air tried the three-pointer from the corner. It was no good. Powers had the rebound, but the entry pass is stolen away by the Lady Highlanders. As Cremoni has it now. She feeds it off to Destiny. Destiny from the left wing. Screen there by Cremoni. She's working against Grary Air. Her Ooh. shot is no good. Rebound comes away to the young freshman, Emmanuel. Look at that speed as she is going down floor. She's trying to go coast to coast. Her shot is up. It's no good. Cremoni fighting for the rebound, tips it out of bounds, and it will stay with Everett here on the possession. Nice attempt by Jen to uh, corral that rebound, and then she tried to smack it off of the Everett defender. I think she might have gotten that, but uh, refs don't agree with me, which they is common. frequently don't. Yes. Aquarier will inbounds to Dottie at the top, Dotton I should say, at the top of the key. The fires over to Guerriere. She was on the line. That's a two-pointer for Guerriere. Her third free, field, free throw, I should say, or field goal of the contest. Stramoni has it now. Trailing by three are the Highlanders. Screened by Jamima. Sabatino all the way around as she drives into the paint. We have a foul or something, a stoppage of play of some sort. <laughs> he stood there for like a statue for like two seconds. Yeah, we're waiting. Well, he could have called, he could've called yeah, five jump balls at the time it took him to call the foul. Right, he's building suspense, Todd. <laughs> Come on. Okay. That's a big foul. Is That's a second personal on Air. She's the leading scorer in tonight's Ooh. game. As Dottie, Dotton, I should say, steals the ball. Her bounce pass is knocked away by Destiny Augustine as she tried to get it to Emmanuel out of bounds, and Everett will have it. Full court pressure here being applied by the Highlanders. Emmanuel quickly through the pressure. Her pass is over to Dotton. Dotton goes up for the layup, and it's good. Four point, or five point lead, I should say now, for Everett, as Melanson tries to pass the ball inside to Joseph. Pass is knocked away. Everett back the other direction. There's Air with the ball. She goes into the paint. Her underhanded runner is up, good. and it's good. Big run here for Everett as they pulled out to a seven point lead. Cremoni tries the pass. It's stolen away, but the travel is going to be called against Everett as that goes against Chloe Cardillo. Timeout going to be called by Coach O'Halloran as he wants to have a discussion with the young ladies with 3.51 remaining here in the third quarter. Big run there for Everett as they've been able to extend this lead out to a seven point lead uh, using a lot of transition there. We talked about it earlier, Braden. They've got to work on defending that transition. Yeah, a lot of sloppy passing from the Somerville uh, side of things too here. Uh, and defending the transition, it's much harder to do it when you uh, get a fast break off of either a missed shot it's more, uh, or, or even just a turnover. It, it's tough to get back, but they have to focus on getting quality offensive pos possessions down on this end of the court, uh, and then being able to get back on defense. And I, while I don't necessarily agree with the switch to the full court, uh, it might work out for them as uh, advertised to, uh, tends to tire as the uh, third quarter continues here. But it's important for the Highlanders to try to come out here, make some adjustments, and stem the tide as it were. We have six nothing run right now for Everett as they've extended their lead to seven points. 29 to 22 is the score. 351 remaining here in the third quarter. So Coach O'Halloran, you know, no doubt wants to you know stem the tide of this run. At the same time, stem the tide of the Crimson Tides run, I should See, say. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do there. I was working on that too. Yeah, you're it there. Really it was difficult. Um, somebody draw me a map. I need it. Um, but um, but we have the Highlanders inbounding here, trailing by seven. So it's important that they get some points on the board here. Full court pressure being applied by Everett. As TC inbounding gets it to Cremoni. She is double teamed in the corner, back to TC. TC oh, gets it up go. to Sabatino. They'll break the pressure there. Destiny Augustine looking to go in. Her shot is up. It's no good. Jamima Joseph tips it back out to Augustine on the rebound. She will drive back into the paint as she goes up for the shot. And we're going to see what the foul or the call is. He wiped off the basket. He calls the blocking foul, says no basket. 
Everett foul number 25. Yeah, I'm not going to get it. Goes against Emmanuel, so that is her fourth personal foul. That is a huge foul with 335 remaining in the third quarter. The young freshman, the point guard freshman for Everett with four fouls. She's going to have to take a seat on the bench here at the next stoppage. She's in the act of shooting. I don't know how you don't give her the shot there. I'm not totally sure either. I mean, she couldn't be even any more in the act of shooting. Durace will check into the game as Emmanuel takes a seat on the bench. Sabatino gets the inbounds for the Lady Highlanders. She's defended out there by Durace. Back, they settle back into that uh, zone, that 1 2 2 zone they've been working. As Destiny drives into the inside, the shot is put up. It's no good by the Highlanders. Back the other direction. Grarier looks to Dotton. Dotton's shot is up. It's no good. Jamima Joseph comes away with the rebound. She's got her head up floor. She's looking for something. Oh, we yeah. have a trip there as we're going to see who this goes against. It might go against Grarier. This could be her third personnel. We'll see who that's called against. Put a feather in your headband there for Jamima because she controlled that possession right there. Yeah, that's a bad trip. She, she foul, 32. Yeah, stopped the Everett's uh, chances of getting that ball single-handedly, getting that bucket, an easy transition bucket where they had three people on, and she was able to get back and defend that and get the rebound and force the ball up the offensive end. That's going to be out on Everett, trying for the inbounds where the Highlanders. 3.09 remaining here in the quarter. Lots of foul trouble for Everett. Also five team fouls on Everett so far here in the second half already. As Cremoni has it at the left wing, she hands it off to Destiny. Destiny looking for a little help out there, defended by the young another young freshman, Durace. Durace will knock it out of bounds. 21 seconds left on the shot clock. Plenty of time for the Lady Highlanders to work their offense. See, so she inbounds it to Cremoni. Cremoni with the baseline drive, tries to find a cutting. Jamima Joseph, but instead it turns over to Everett. Again with another turnover, she's got to take care of that ball. Look for a better pass than that. Don't try to go, you're not, you're not getting style points for a difficult pass right now. Jurace has it on the right wing, cut, feeds it into the inside as Doton tried to pass it down to Jurace. Nobody was home, out of bounds, off of Everett, so Somerville will have it. Somerville only three points so far this quarter as seven point lead for Everett. So Miranda Melanson checks back into the game. Jamima Josephs will take a seat. Jurace tried to steal that ball away, out of bounds, off of Everett. Yeah, if you're Somerville right now, with the full court pressure, you can't let that rustle your jimmies. Uh, you kind of have to take with it as it comes. Don't force the issue. Don't feel like you need to get the ball immediately out of your hands to move the ball up the court. Make the smart pass, as we see them not do that right now. Uh, TC trying to get that ball in. It gets stolen away by Guerriere. She feeds it off to Dotton at the left wing, defended out there by Melanson. Melina Pimentel still not in the game at this point in time. Yeah, they're checking her out on the sidelines. So doing As Durace's shot is up, it's no good. Rebound put back up, and it's good by Chloe Cardillo. Crazy acute angle on that shot. I sat in on a geometry class. TC now, defended by Guerriere. She goes in, her shot is up, and TC is good. OTC, TCB. Hey, we can get that one to stick? Uh, we, can, we can certainly try. It's a lot of acronyms. It's the 8 nothing run for Everett. Now it is a 10 to 2 run for Everett as it is a nine point lead oh, no. for the Crimson Tide. Sabatino able to keep that one away from the Everett player, Guerrier, but then steps out of bounds. Melina Pimentel checking into this game now. Yeah, they need uh, Melina's ball handling and passing skills out here right now. You see Emily Sabatino's line, foot onto the line. So nine point lead here for Everett. Minute 39 remaining in the quarter. Air has it. She feeds to the inside to Wilkerson. Wilkerson will work it back around outside to Guerriere. Guerriere with the dribble penetration. She will go to the line shooting two. She's been automatic from the free throw line with seven free throws on the night. She has made all seven. She had an eighth free throw that was good, but it was wiped Some off due to a lane violation. Jen Cremoni with the foul. That's going to be her third personal foul. Second team foul for the Lady Highlanders here in the second half. Yeah, Everett's settling into a groove here. If you're the Highlanders, you can't let them dictate the pace and hurry up what you're trying to do. You can't rush these things, especially when you're trying to make a comeback. The more pressure you put on yourself to uh, try to score the ball, 
the harder it actually becomes. You know, let the game flow, let it come to you. They were making some nice moves, uh, moving the ball side to side, working a half-court offense. They just got to get down to the off uh, offensive end at this point. 11-point lead now for the Crimson Tide as Pimentel back the other direction, goes into the paint and will pick up the foul against Wilkerson as that will be <laughs> Keanu Wilkerson's second personal foul. That's the sixth team foul against Everett Ever foul here in the second half. So for the remainder of the second half, so the entire fourth quarter plus the remaining 124 here in the third quarter, the Lady Highlanders will be in the bonus going to the line uh, shooting free throws for the remainder of the game. That'll be helpful as long as you get... Ooh. It'd be helpful when you make the shots, but the Pimentel. more shots you get, the more chances you get to make them. And with time being stopped, it lets them hopefully creep back into this game. Yep, trailing by 11, 35 to 24, Pimentel's second free throw attempt is good. There you go. Ten point lead now for the Crimson Tide as Jamima Josephs checks back into the game. Coach O'Halloran pulling that full court pressure back now for the Lady Highlanders. Still set up in the man-to-man. -man. Gruyere has it, she's running the point. Defended by Pimentel. Dures defended by TC. Looking for some help. Finds Gruyere cutting at the foul line. She is defended by Pimentel. Tried to get the reach in, tried to get the ball. No good there. There's Gruyere with the baseline drive. Feeds it off to Wilkerson. Wilkerson shot is up. It's no good. And we're going to have a travel call. Wipe off the basket. Harding called for the travel. So it remains a 10-point lead for Everett. And on the travel turnover, the Lady Highlanders have the ball. Yeah, they missed the first two on that possession from Everett. Third time's a charm for the refs to actually you catch are up. You, you're, you're getting all the Tommy points tonight, brother. I'm working on it. Pimoni with a nice pass oh. there to Joseph. Joseph's shot is up. It's no good. It goes out of bounds <laughs> off of Gruyere. Nice That's attempt by Jamima to go up there and to get her own rebound at the same time. It's the stuff that's going to work for you. Keep making it. Get the ball down low. Pound it. Pimentel gets it to Joseph. Jamima with the ball. Feeds it over to Destiny. Back to Joseph. Sabatino from the left, or right wing, I should say. Her three-pointer is no good. Guerriere now with the ball. Lots of speed there. She Aww. goes in. She gets bumped. Destiny Augustine gets called for the foul. And Guerriere back to the foul line, where she has been automatic tonight. That's going to be Augustine's second foul personal two, foul, the third team Augustine. foul against the Lady Highlanders. So Guerriere will go to the line shooting two. She's nine for nine from the line tonight. That make it 10 for 10 from the line. Yeah, it's key for the Highlanders to get back on defense, set your feet. Don't let them do what we want to do to them down this end and drive the paint and get uh, easy high percentage shots with a very high probability of getting a foul call to send them the line. And a 12 point lead now. That is a huge, Huge drive by Melina Pimentel because that is the fourth personal foul picked up by Guerrier. Yeah, that's definitely probably going to put her on the bench, but it looks like the coach might actually be leaving her in. Heads up play by Melina. Great to see her back out there. Guerrier. The two best ball handlers for Everett, Guerrier as well as Emmanuel, both have four personal fouls right now. So really big decisions have to be made by Coach Turner over on the Everett bench. Looking to complete the three-point play, Melina Pimentel, no good as uh, that one rims out and Everett will now come away with it. 18 seconds left in the third quarter. 10-point lead for the Crimson Tide. Guerriere with the ball, defended by Sabatino. Harding has it. Skip pass nice. all the way across. Blocked by Jamima. Oh, no, that's too far. <laughs> <laughs> Pseudo shot slash pass. That was a pass. A little off there. She led Sabatino too much. 1.8 seconds remaining here in the quarter. She kind of Rex Grossman that one. Guerriere has it. No shot there as the shot came off after the buzzer. Quick update, by the way, as the uh, Somerville boys are over at Everett playing against the, uh, against the uh, Crimson Tide over there. Uh, Somerville trailed at the half by the score of 39 to 27, but they were able to make that up in the third quarter, great third quarter for the boys team, as they have a 49 to 48 lead now against Everett, going into the fourth quarter of play over at Everett High School on the boys' side. On the girls' side, kind of the opposite situation,
close game, two point lead for Everett at the half, and then they used a basic 10 to two run yep. against Somerville to take a 10 point lead here going into the fourth quarter of play. Yeah, you can see uh, during that run that the Highlanders got out of their element a little bit and started to play the game that Everett wanted to play, and you can't be doing that. Uh, as Jamima Joseph is being uh, seen by the trainers now, that's another key player for the Highlanders who has to be checked out by the trainer. The excellent athletic trainer for Somerville High School, Michelle Kelly, is over there, and she doesn't send players back in unless they're absolutely ready to go. Uh, she's very, very, very careful about any concussion issues or any in injuries whatsoever, so they're probably going to proceed with caution which is not great news uh, yeah. for the Somerville Highlanders, but it's very good news uh, for the health of our players. Yeah, uh, assistant coach there, um, um, Alicia also over there. Um, and Michelle, of course, like you said, Michelle Kelly, tremendous athletic trainer, um, very on top of injury situations and very, you know, very, very strong with her, her, her basically keeping her players safe. Yeah, and it's excellent. It's uh, extremely important to do so. After all, this is just a game. Emmanuel and Guerrier out on the floor. Emmanuel with the ball. She feeds it over to the left wing. Harden ha Harding has it there. She feeds it down to Dutton. Dutton with the turnaround. She goes up. The foul is going to be called. That's going to go up against Pimentel as Molina picks Some up her first personal foul. Oh, they're going to put that against Destiny? What? Okay. I swear it was Pimentel, but okay, that's going to be the third against Destiny then. You can't see my face right now, and you can thank our producers for that later, but if you had to describe my look, I would describe it as incredulous. As Dutton from the line makes her first. 11 point lead once again for the Crimson Tide. Dutton's second free throw is up, rims around out, and goes out of bounds off of Everett, so. Somerville will have the ball. Everett extending their defensive pressure as they go to a man-to-man, -man full court pressure here. It's been very effective here in the second half. Pimentel inbounding. Gets it to Cremoni, back to Pimentel. Pimentel trying to knife through. Ball stolen away by Emmanuel, and she is fouled by Molina as she goes to the bucket. So that will be the first personal against Molina. Will Emmanuel will go to the line shooting two. That's six team fouls against the Lady Highlanders. Both teams, for all intents and purposes, in the bonus now for the remainder of this game. Emmanuel's first shot is up, and it's good. Coach O'Halloran deciding he's had enough of the tie. He's gonna go for the no-tie look as Emmanuel's second shot is no good. She tried to knife in to get her own rebound. Instead, she tipped it out of bounds. As you can see Coach Turner there, the Everett coach, and the Everett coaching staff there. Coach Turner on the left. She's not wearing a tie either. No, she is not. She is wearing the, uh, the nice scarf around the neck look though. Oh yeah, you can pull that off. Yeah. Ball is stolen away by the by the uh, Crimson Tide once again. That full court pressure really, really causing the Highlanders trouble. Harding has it out on the left wing. Ten seconds on the shot clock for Everett. Emmanuel with the ball feeds it down low to Dotton. Dotton goes in, uh, and it is good. A very productive possession for the Crimson Tide right there. Able to milk the shot Lots clock. Lots of trouble there for Cremoni as she is trapped in the corner. Ball is knocked out of bounds off of Emmanuel for Everett. We have a timeout on the floor as Coach O'Halloran wants to talk about what they need to do to stop this pressure. As you can see right here. Originally, I thought that one was off of us. I milked some of them. Oh, nope, got it on the elbow right at the end there. It's a good call by the refs. They were due. Who are you and what have you done with Braden? Sorry, I'm telling you, they were due. Okay. Hey, broken clock's right twice a week, twice a day, right? Twice a week? Twice a week? Okay. Well, I don't really have- the scope of the clock. I don't like looking at clocks. As Jamima Joseph running the sideline, staying warm over there. Want to see her back out on there. There's Michelle Kelly working her out over there, talking to her, making sure that she's all right. 7.01 remains in the game. The Highlanders trail by 14, 41 to 27. They trail by two at the half. And then in the third quarter of play, um, a, a, the, the Crimson Tide, specifically Yasmin Guerrier, uh, number 32 for them, 
Um, had a tremendous third quarter and she had 10 points in the quarter, 19 points on the game so far. On the flip side of that, Guerriere has four personal fouls. So one thing that the Highlanders want to do is they want to try to get the ball going right up against number 32, Guerriere out there. They also want to get after Emmanuel, number 25. Both of those players for Everett, the best ball handlers for Everett, mm -hmm. have four fouls apiece. So uh, any comeback here for the Lady Highlanders, I think, might be key right, by trying to get one of those two ball handlers or both of those ball handlers fouled out of this game. But the, first of all, they've got to break this defensive pressure. Yep, that's very important. You've got to get the ball over half court. See what oh. they drew up over there as Destiny got the inbounds, fed it off to Pimentel. Sabatino will try to finish. She does not finish effectively, though, and Dotton comes away with it. Nice and trap. Dotton is trapped, but she feeds it off to Emmanuel. Emmanuel over to Guerriere. And that's going to be a travel there, as Dotton was defended very nicely by Destiny Augusta. Yeah, if you're Somerville, focus on your defense. Shut them down. You're not going to be able to make up this deficit if you're not able to stop them in the defensive Pimentel end. Pimentel dribbles into the paint. Her Ooh. shot is up. It is no good. Foul is going to be called, though. We're going to see who this goes against. It's going to go against number 22, as that's going to be Carolina Pinaflor. That's her first personal foul, the eighth team foul against the Crimson Tide. At the line shooting two is Pimentel. One thing you noticed is Pimentel made that drive to that lane. You saw that uh, Emmanuel, number 25, and Guerriere, both of them backed off big time. They did not want to be the ones to pick up that foul, and they left it to the other players to go in. So you can see they are definitely conscious of the fact that they have to stay in the game. Something that the Highlanders can definitely exploit, especially with Pimentel's speed and quickness uh, and her ball high knowing skills. No question about that. And her foul shooting as well. She's three for four from the line after making two there. Really improved area of her game. Harden, Harding takes the skip nice. pass. Great job by Sabatino. Gets her hand in the passing lane. Gets it off to Pimentel. Pimentel dribbles into the paint, goes up for the left-handed shot, and it is good. Once again, Emmanuel stepping away, allowing Pimentel to finish there. Textbook, way to go, uh, Molina. That's good court awareness. As Emmanuel's three-pointer is up from an extremely long range, and it is good. Makes it a 13-point lead for the Crimson Tide. As Emmanuel able to save that one from going out of bounds. There's Sabatino once again getting into the passing lane, but Harding comes away with it. Emmanuel with the ball now from the right wing. Feeds it back to the top of the key. Tries the entry pass down to Dotton. Stolen away by the Lady Highlanders. And they're quick on the jump ball whistle once again. But on the alternating possession, the Lady Highlanders will keep possession of it. Yeah, on that one, I don't know as much as I'd go with the jump ball as I would have gone with a foul on number 25, which would have knocked her out of the game. But, That's true. Hey, we end up with another one of them jump balls. And now an inbounds once again against that full court pressure that's bedeviled the Highlanders. And Dotton's able to knock the ball away to Harding. Harding with the shot, no good. Now where's the jump ball there, I have to ask. And it took him a little while to get that one. Uh, much longer than he had throughout the night. He's but trying to average jump ball, The... Alternating possession will go to Everett. Dumb rule. Dumbest rule ever. It's Harding will inbounds to Emmanuel. It's getting a Feeds workout. it over to Guerriere. Harding with it once again, defended by Pimentel. Over to Guerriere. Guerriere drives into the paint. Her shot is up, it's no good. Josephs comes away with the rebound. Feeds it off to Cremoni. Cremoni back to Jamima, as Jamima will run the floor. Pimentel with the ball now. She drives into the paint. Her shot is oh. up. It's no good. A lot of watching Very the ball. Air with it now. Pimentel knocks the ball away from behind to Cremoni. Cremoni with the ball now. Feeds it off to Jamima. Jamima looking down low, trying to get the ball to Pimentel, but she couldn't control the pass. It goes out of bounds off of Molina, and it will be the Crimson Tide with the ball. Just less than five minutes remaining in the game. 4.56 on the clock. Yeah, Highlanders aren't doing themselves any favors. There's not a lot of collapsing or moving towards the ball. Not a lot of leading on the passing end, as you can see from the Everett side of things. Beautiful pass. Guerriere wide open on the back door there as the Highlanders lost her in transition. Can't be doing that if you're going to try to make up this deficit. Yeah, 15-point lead now for the Crimson Tide as Cremoni has it. 
Feeds over to Destiny. Destiny with the baseline drive. Passes it over to Pimentel. Pimentel with the baseline drive from the other side. Goes up. Shot Number is no good. Rebound brought away by the Crimson Tide. Number 22 with the ball as Pinaflor has it. Out of bounds, though. Off of Pinaflor. And the Highlanders will have it. And we're going to get a timeout from the Somerville side. Timeout, Somerville. Timeout on the floor. And as this fourth quarter drags on, you can see both teams are getting tired. It's getting a little sloppy out there. Uh, if you're the Somerville Highlanders, you really want to see them coming back to the ball, uh, trying to help their teammates out a little bit. There's, you can't leave them out on an island. Uh, it hasn't worked so far this game. It's not going to. It's not going to magically start working. So. Ball movement, uh, moving without the ball is going to be big here, and making sure that you make the nice pass, the crisp pass, the easy pass, uh, if you want to get back into this game, which is still possible. I mean, all you got to really do is make up a little more than three points every minute, and you're right back. Uh, you're tied up at the uh, end of this here. Yeah, one thing that uh, that uh, specifically Pimentel's been doing, and I'd like to see some of the other Highlanders do, is that dribble penetration, yep. try to get into the paint, specifically if they're being defended by number 32, Guerriere, or number 25, Emmanuel, because you've got to try to get those fifth fouls on one of those two major ball handlers for Everett. Very, very dangerous here. Turner leaving those two players out on the floor pretty much throughout the entire fourth quarter here, both of them with four fouls. But that just goes to demonstrate how important they are to the game that Everett wants to run. Yeah, if they get a ball, uh, if they get their hands on the ball on the offensive end and they find 32 or 25 in front of them, go at them. As Turner will pull back the defensive dogs on the full court. So that full court pressure has really been trouble for the Lady Highlanders, but Trent and Tide going to pull back into, this, into their 1-2-2 zone. As Destiny drives into the paint, she's going to be fouled as she went up. We'll see who that foul goes against. Hey, that's a break for the Highlanders. They're going to pull foul number that three, full court pressure off. That lets them set up their half court, and they've been able to score out of that so far today. That might bode well uh, for the Lady Highlanders here. Melissa Mendez called for that personal foul. That's her first. Ninth team foul against the Crimson Tide. Destiny Augustine's foul shot is no good. Got to make your free throws right now. Emily Sabatino checking back into the game as Jen Cremoni will take a seat. See what which Highlanders are out there. We have Sabatino, we also have TC, Taylor Casey out there, Melina Pimentel, Jamima, Jamima Joseph, as well as Destiny Augustine as she tries the second shot, uh -huh. no good, as they feed it out to Casey. Casey's shot is up, it's no good. Joseph with a second rebound there and gets it out to Destiny. Destiny will dribble, penetrate, her shot is up, it's no good. Fighting for the rebound, it goes out of bounds off of Everett. I like the idea by Destiny there, did the ball uh go for her, but you know, drive the paint. That's what we've been saying. Drive, drive, drive. Pimentel looking to inbounds for the Highlanders. Finds Destiny in the right corner. Feeds it back oh, to Pimentel. Pimentel shot is up. It's no good. There you she go. fights for the rebound. Oh, really? We have out balls knocked out of bounds against Pimentel, or off of Pimentel, I should say. So the Crimson Tide will inbound. Yeah. 346 left in the game had a little bit of an obstruction. That's putting it nicely. The real wood, wood for it would be a mauling by 32 to keep Molina from getting that ball. But no foul called. No, no foul called at all. As Mendez has it, she feeds it to the inside of Dotton. Wow. Dotton with the ball. She goes up Dotton and it's two. good. Nice move by Naomi Dotton. Showing those post moves. Like seeing that in Lady Basketball. Oop, Jamima. Cutting into the paint, her shot is up. It's no, no good. We have a foul called. We're gonna get uh, Jamima reaching over the top. Wow. Foul number three, Jamima Joseph. That's her second personal foul, 16 foul against the Lady Highlanders. Let's take a look at this. Okay. That's over the back. Okay. Back the other direction. Down in the paint, it's gonna be wiped away. We have a travel called against Everett. As Lady Highlanders will have the ball here. Highlanders gotta play in control here to get the most out of every possession. No. Pimentel. 
tried to get the bounce pass into Destiny. Goes out of bounds, untouched, so on the turnover. The Crimson Tide will have it. See, Destiny's a little frustrated there that uh, Molina didn't pass her that ball a little bit sooner. And everybody's frustrated over on the Highlander bench, and with good reason. 17 point lead for the Crimson Tide of Everett. Quick update about what's going on over at Everett as the, uh, the boys team in a locked in a one point battle now with 22 seconds left. Everett is up and they have the ball. 59-58 is the score over there at Everett High School. Those updates coming up to us by uh, Jeff Argenziano. Jeff, uh, of course, uh, trailing, uh, tracking after the boys team, doing great commentary as well for the boys team. Um, so keeping us updated on what's going on over at Everett in a very, very important boys great, greater Boston League game. Of course, over here, the girls side, uh, kind of an opposite story. The uh, Lady Highlanders struggling here in the second half. They trail by two at half, but Everett able to extend this lead to a 17-point lead here in the second half of play. Yeah, you can see that Everett really locked down on D here. Only nine points in the second half for the Somerville Highlanders. They haven't been able to. They weren't able to break the full court press when Everett was doing it, and haven't been able to get the good shots uh, that they've been looking for. Emmanuel with the ball for Everett. She feeds it off to Mendez. Mendez with it now at the top of the key, gives it back to Emmanuel. Emmanuel gets it down into the low block to Ross. And there's going to be a foul called against Destiny as that's going to be her fourth Someone personal foul. foul. Two, Destiny Augustine. Seventh team foul against the Lady Highlanders. So going to the line, shooting one and one, is going to be Kira Ross. One and one. Ross's first shot is up. It's good. Second shot by Ross. No good as Joseph comes away with the rebound. Two and a half minutes remaining in the game. Joseph defended by Ross, way out away from the basket. Nope. As Pimentel tried the entry pass to Sabatino, too far, goes out of bounds off the fingertips of Emily Sabatino, so Everett will have the ball with 2.22 remaining. Emmanuel gets it. She's well ahead of the pack. She will go up for the layup, and it is Emmanuel good. For two. Oh, no, no. Oh. Oh. Emmanuel down hard on the floor as the ball is turned over there. Yeah, number 25, Jackie Emanuel, smacked her, hard, her head hard on the floor. Someone foul number yes, five, Melita Pimentel. Pimentel called for the foul. That's her second personal foul. I can understand wanting to come right back at them uh, after they score an easy transition bucket uh, on the fast break, but we can't throw a pass to a player that's triple covered. It's just not going to work. You're going to have to go with another option as Ivy Richardson's in the game. Yep. Ivy Richardson into the game, also checking into the game. We have Sydney Ravella as Air continues her tremendous free throw shooting. Putting on a clinic out there. Fundamentals are important, kids. Hit your free throws. 12 for 12 from the line. Looking to go 13 for 13. And she does. 53-31, the lead for Everett. Two minutes left in the game. Pimentel will drive into the paint. Her shot is up. It's no good. And we have a jump ball on the alternating possession. Somerville will maintain possession. Melina a little frustrated. She had an open run to the rack and just couldn't finish in that situation. Yeah, she had a weird angle to it. Oh. And they're going to say Destiny stepped out of bounds. Destiny can't believe that. I have to actually agree with that. I didn't see her stepping out at all. I didn't think she stepped out. I think she might have dribbled out. Possible. I think that ball might have hit the line. You know, it's funny. I've noticed a shorter bench. This is the first time that we're seeing uh, some of the... Alejandro yeah. Chiara. Uh -huh. Alejandro out on the floor now. First time in the game. Guerriere gets the inbounds. She will dribble into the paint, kick it out to the side. As Mendez's shot is up, it's no good. We have a foul underneath. They're going to call it against 
Let's see here, they're gonna get uh, Destiny with the push off and she will be fouling out of the game as her first, fifth personal foul. Foul number two, Destiny Augustine. So Destiny fouls out of the game. Minute 47 remaining in this game. 53-31, the Everett lead. Checking into the game is going to be Alita Da Cruz. It's the first time we've seen Alita. Bad news from over at Everett as the boys fall to the Crimson Tide of Everett by the score of 64 to 58. Someone tells me they hit their free throws. Something tells me they probably did. Speaking of hitting free throws, there's Mendez doing exactly that with her first free throw of the game. It's good. Mendez's second shot is up, and it's good. Kiara Alejandro with the ball, minute 45 remaining in the game. Oop. Eight. Sydney Ravella with the ball now. She dribbles down. Nice line drive for Sydney. Kicks it out to Sabatino. Sabatino's shot is up. It is no good. Nice play. Ross came away with the rebound, but the ball is stolen away by Alejandro. Ivy Richardson looking to go up with it. Shot is no good. They get the ball back into the hands of Guerrier. Ross with it. She will dribble towards the basket. Her shot is up. It's no good. Rebound is being fought for. Guerrier comes away with it, feeds it off to Ross. Ross's shot is up. It's no good. Goes out of bounds off of Everett. So with 58.1 seconds remaining, Somerville has the ball. Yep. Yes, they do. <laughs> Sydney Ravella running the point now for the Highlanders. Feeding to the inside, looking for Emily Sabatino. Ball is stolen away by Cardinal. Cardinal gets the ball stolen away almost. Alita De Cruz. As the foul is going to be called, I think that's going to go against. Third foul number 33, Caroline Cardinal. Uh, goes against Cardinal. Yeah, nice to see the hustle from the bench squad out here. And uh... yeah, De Cruz will go to the line shooting one and one. Actually, it could be two. I think she's at the line shooting two. Yes, it is two. Yeah, That's bonus. the 10th team foul. Double bonus. Double bonus for the Lady Highlanders. 43.3 seconds remaining. Is there like a triple bonus? I just want like if they get, there's not a triple bonus. Did they get like 20 fouls? Does everybody get a taco? The Cruz hits it from the free throw line. I mean, I could go for a taco. I can always go for a taco. Yeah. Taco trucks on every corner. Yeah. Oh, that'd be amazing. The Cruz's second free throw, no good. 40 seconds left. Sabatino still playing that tight defense against Guerrier. That dogged determination from Sabatino, you see that? Ross defended by Richardson. Baseline drive there, her shot is no good. Cardinal with the shot, no good. She gets her own rebound as she goes up. She's fouled. A foul, let's see here. A foul will go against Ivy Richardson. Foul number 22, Ivy Richardson. That's our first personal. Tenth team foul against the Lady Highlanders. Yeah, throughout this entire game, you've been seeing the Highlanders slip into some bad habits that we haven't seen since last season. A lot of looking at the shots as they go up and not moving towards the ball, not collapsing into the paint, not chasing after the rebounds. A lot of looky-loo action. You gotta keep your feet moving, get into position, and try to give yourself the best chance of getting the ball. Rebound comes out to Everett. Shot clock is off. Everett is content to pull the ball out. 15 seconds remaining is Cardinal. Her shot is up and it spins home. Cardinal for two. Five seconds left as the Cruz has it. Two. One second nope. remaining as Alejandro's shot is after final the buzzer. Score. So the final score of this one is 58 to 32 as a very, very tight first half breaks down to a basic blowout in the second half as Everett applied pressure and uh, the uh, Lady Highlanders really had a hard time dealing with that full court pressure that Everett brought. Yeah, as a tale of two halves, as you said, uh, you really saw some great execution from uh, the Crimson Tide out there, really played their game well and forced the Highlanders to try to uh, keep 
play catch up with them as well. And it's just, it's so hard, especially when you've got an offense that can hit their free throws and play the fundamentals so well. It, it, you got to play almost mistake-free ball for it to really work that well. Uh, it's, it, it, it's a shame that it, it looks like a blowout because they played so well through the first half. The game just got away from them. And, and unfortunately, for the Highlanders, uh, it's another L in the loss column. It's, it's really too bad because they did play their heart out there. They played for the full time. Uh, Melina Pimentel, it's nice to see her come back after the original in injury and also to see uh, Jimmy Joseph. Hopefully there won't be any lingering effects from that. A nice hard fought, a hard fought game, uh, but uh, it uh, didn't turn out so well for the Highlanders. No, no doubt about that. Uh, unfortunately, Highlanders lose this uh, Greater Boston League contest. They move to 0-2 in a Greater Boston League action as they lose 58-32 to tonight. Looking over the score sheet very quickly, leading scorer in the contest was uh, Yasmin Guerriere. She was tremendous. Yeah. Uh, she was actually basically the, the person who began the run in the third quarter that, uh, that started the uh, fall for the Highlanders. She ended uh, the contest with 23 points. She was 13 for 13 from the free throw line. Uh, just a tremendous uh, a tremendous performance by her. Respect. No question about it. Nothing you can do with that. I mean, if you hit your free throws, that's 13 points. That's 13 unanswered points that just go into that column for uh, uh, the Crimson Tide. And it, that's really one of the main reasons why it was a blowout. Absolutely. No doubt about it. I'd only missed three free throws in tonight's contest. They had, I believe they were, um, I don't have, I, I could sit here and add it up very quickly, but I believe they had about 18 free throws and missed only three. So a tremendous uh, job, a fundamental uh, job by them. Looking over at the uh, Lady Highlanders side of the ledger, leading scorer was Melina Pimentel for the Lady Highlanders with six points. Jamima Joseph with four. Also, Emily Sabatino with four points. Mm -hmm. um, so she got into the offensive column. And TC Taylor Casey also with four points for the Lady Highlanders. Unfortunately, a loss here, Greater Boston League loss, a conference loss for the Lady Highlanders. So uh, they lose to Ever Crimson Tide by the score of 58 to 32, moving their record. Uh, the Crimson Tide now three and four. The uh, Highlanders, unfortunately, three and five um, on the season. So uh, that's going to do it tonight from Broon Field House. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Uh, Braden Moriarty, once again, I'm Todd Harmon. He is. And uh, we have been uh, bringing you Somerville Lady Highlanders basketball on Somerville Educational Channel 15.